This meeting is being recorded. Uh, so, um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Gabor Sabo, and this is going to be the next Rust Maven uh, uh, event. Uh, I'm going to talk about the liquid template system uh, that is a, just a regular crate in, in Rust. Uh, it comes from uh, a project uh, from Shopify. Uh, they wrote this template system in Ruby. And then many languages, many programming languages implemented the same uh, templating uh, template system. In, before we get there, let me introduce myself. So as I said, my name is Gabor. I uh, have been teaching programming for 25 years or so. Uh, I've been programming for about 40, but teaching programming Perl, Python, and uh, recently also I'm writing a lot of Rust and trying to uh, teach it uh, in, to various levels. And I also provide consulting to, to companies uh, introducing uh, um, testing and CI, and, and uh, this, has, this is the area, more or less. Uh, a templating system, let's talk about, but actually before the templating system, let me share you the, the screen and show you something that I was working on. Um, ooh, yeah, looks totally different, as I said, uh, Zoom. So probably you you can see now virtual Rust events, right? Uh, I would be happy if uh, someone wrote me back then telling me that that's indeed what you're seeing. So I'm showing the right uh, screen. Um, this is a pro project. I, I'll put it on. I put the link in the in the chat as well. Um, uh, okay. So this is a project I started recently. The whole idea is that um, trying to help people who would like to go, go to Rust events, uh, virtual Rust events, because they don't have local ones, or just because they are interested in other places. Um, so I'm on this website. I'm listing them and. Uh, collecting them uh, mostly from uh, this, week, this Week in Rust, uh, which is a nice newsletter, but they only have the date and they can't, because they send it out to all kinds of people uh, in a, all kinds of time zones, they can't really in, include the, the right time zone uh, for everyone. Uh, so, but with JavaScript, we can do this. So that's what I, I'm doing in this uh, website. Uh, you have the, the events, and then you can filter filter them uh, how far ahead they are. So next 24 hours, let's say, or next 30 days. Uh, and in which hours, between which hours in your local time zone. Uh, probably you will go something like, let's say you don't want to go bit before eight and you would want to have it finished between two, uh, or to start it before 10 p.m. And then you can also search for uh, language. So here, actually, this will be empty because I think I need to set to zero in order to see the Spanish one. Um, and the others are English. So far, this, these are the, the ones I found. If you, have, if you know any other virtual event, uh, fine, please let me know. And of course, also, uh, there should be sub, uh, submitted to the news, uh, newsletter this week in, in Rust so other people can uh, reach it. So that's really nothing to do with the, the template system because, um, is it? Yeah, probably, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even remember if I use any template system in this uh, or just uh, build something. But actually, let's look at it and, and uh, let's take a look at this one and then we'll, we'll see if um, there is a point uh, I can make regarding this one. So uh, this is the... Uh, virtual events, I think this is the repository. And then there is the, the create that uh, that uh, that we are uh, that I'm using. And here, cargo tunnel. Uh, yes, actually, I'm using the liquid template here. So that's another project I wanted to show you uh, I wanted to, to tell you about two other projects I've, where I used the liquid template, but apparently this is the third one I used. So you can see in the, in the probably I don't need the liquid core in this case, but I needed the liquid uh, template system to be a dependency. And then I have a template that looks like this. Well, this is uh, mostly just HTML, but what's interesting is that I have this placeholders, so it is curly, bra 
curly braces, two curly braces on the left, two on the right, and then some word here. And that's basically, think about it as a variable that will be filled by our Rust code. And then from this, we generate uh, the page. And uh, here too, I, I, I put in the, the title. In now, right now, the whole website is for Rust only, but I thought that I'm going to build it uh, uh, for various languages, uh, various programming languages of various areas of interest, uh, similar pages, and then it would have it would make sense to have different title for each one of those uh, pages. And let me search for here. Uh, so there's got not there's not much of a templating system here. Um, in this case, uh, here just another variable which is called content, and I guess I just push in all the content where I already generated some HTML manually inside the Rust code. So let me uh, show you this one because I think this is going to be hor horrible and this is not what you pr probably should do, but um, where is the content? Yeah, so um, no, actually, so this is how, it, that's interesting. Okay, so I forgot about this, but it's a good good thing to show you. Uh, as an example of how I am using it, it might be not the best uh, way to do this. So I need to create an HTML page. Uh, I go back to the website. So basically, this HTML page. Then, then later on, uh, using JavaScript, you can you can set what to show and what to hide. But uh, uh, Rust generates this basic page that has a title which, which appears here at the top. And let me know if. Uh, the font are too small. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Okay, so this this is the uh, the title where this was set by the Rust code into the template. This is the same title I showed you, and then the rest is the content, uh, which is also was generated by uh, from some other template. But as you can see, this is a very repetitive thing. So here I have the title of the event, which links to the event. Uh, this is the name of the group, this is the language, and this is the timestamp, which is actually in the local time zone, my local time zone. And if you are visiting it, uh, that page, then it's called, going to be in your local time zone. And that's sort of the big added value of this website over the this week of um, uh, this week, this week in, in Rust. So the way I did it is I first of all uh, that I have the data. Somehow I collected the data. You can see here I have the events. Basically, it comes from I think a, a, a YAML file where I maintain these files, and all of this is uh, um, in uh, GitHub. Let me even before that, before I go on, where is the where is the link to the source code? Huh? It, ah, here it is. Okay. So you can, uh, I put it in the chat, even though you can, you can really easily find it. Well, now that I found it myself. Okay. So this is, this is the link to the source code where you can see all the, both the code and the data. So this is just the YAML file containing all the events. And uh, in the events, I have the starting date and time with the time zone. I try to set the time zone according to the where the event organizer is. So in Meetup, every event is look, is sort of local, organized in some place. Um, and when you look at the Meetup website, um, you could theoretically look, see their, their local time. In some events, you can see their local time, but uh, by default, they will, they will show it in your local time. So I have this date thing. And then, I, I read in the data from the YAML and I filter a little bit with, uh, with Rust to, uh, yeah, I'm filtering the old ones. So even if I don't uh, update uh, the YAML file, it won't include anymore the, the events that already passed. Um, and then taking that, uh, taking one template, okay, this page template, uh, I use that template and then I use the liquid uh, template system to generate the content, the internal part of the of the page, and then I'm using a, a separate template 
to generate the whole site. Now, I'm not sure why I did it in two steps. Uh, probably don't, I, I don't really need to do it in, in two steps. Um, but um, I just, as the things happened, I, I, I slowly built it up and, and that's how it works now. Uh, probably it could be uh, merged into a single template. I think also it was sort of, uh, I was thinking about uh, you know, having maybe different pages on this website, one with the list of the events and then some different ones. But um, but for now it's, it, it, it's fine. So here I take the template and let's look at the template. This template, it's called page HTML. Um, that has, uh, I guess I'm just confusing things now. Where is this HTML coming from? Very strange what's going on. I don't know what's going on now. Hmm. Okay, right. This is some uh, leftover from Google. So this content thing is a leftover thing. Forget about it, apparently. Okay, really uh, bad way of presenting something. Uh, but I just uh, thought about it. So this HTML thing is apparently just an empty string that I'm passing on to this template, which is called the page. Okay, and it, it has a place here, but basically it's empty. This is probably a leftover from some earlier version of this code. We can forget about it for now. The interesting part is that I have these events. So this is what I read and from the YAML file, and now it's a vector of some, uh, some uh, uh, I don't know what, what are these, uh, event, yeah. So this, there's event struct. And so I have a vector of these event structs. And then I take call this liquid parser builder this this thing, this uh, expression, this function, and uh, give it the the template, which is the actual actual content of the template file. So this one, I don't know if you're familiar with this. This macro include str basically takes the whatever file is here and takes the content of it and embeds it into the compiled executable that we create. I didn't need this here, uh, the, 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 the embedding. I could have used uh, that uh, some other code that we'll see when I read in the, the template on the fly when, I'm, when the code runs. But uh, in some, other, some cases, it's much better that everything is compiled into the, uh, the code. So in this case, this is what I did, that I took the template, I compiled it into, and now this template variable is actually the string, the HTML string with those placeholders. And then I pass that template variable here into this parse uh, method. And the whole thing returns something, which I called it again template. So uh, this is uh, uh, shadowing the earlier template variable. Uh, and this is already uh, the sort of the compiled template okay so this is still not not uh, i still haven't combined the data with the template i just took the plain ht plain text with the with the signs and basically compiled into this liquid internal format okay or or converted into this object that uh, li liquid object okay and then i can create this variable and for some reason in the documentation of liquid, they use this variable named global. So I just kept using it. Uh, and in, in this one, I can put in the uh, various, basically for each field, I can put in some value. Now we have, we saw this content that has just an empty string, doesn't really matter. And then this event and the title, which is just the text for now, the, the virtual Rust events. And this will should be replaced by virtual Python events, let's say, if I create some similar thing for Python. Uh, and uh, events is this vector of, uh, 
of um, structs. This is just building up an object. So using this liquid, uh, liquid object macro. And then this is that takes the actual data and the template and combines them. And they call it rendering. So this is what renders the end HTML that will be shown to the user. So we take the template that was already, let's say, compiled or generated using liquid uh, call the render method, provide these globals, and then unwrap whatever the way you handle the errors uh, is really up to you. Here I used a lot of unwrap because it's a, it is the easy, it was the easy way to do it uh, for now and uh, obviously not the right way, but uh, but I wanted to have the, the thing working uh, and running and if it fails, then it will fail and then I will fix it. Uh, after all, I'm not uh, really distributing it to anyone. It's just running on uh, on um, GitHub. Um, it's basically GitHub pages. So it runs on GitHub Actions, and that's how it generates the website. So this is the output, and then I'm just regularly just writing out this file into uh, the content into a file called index.html, and then the whole thing is is uh, in... Uh, I, I can show you. It's in... Uh, inside a GitHub action, GitHub workflow. And uh, at one point, this GitHub workflow uh, deploys, I mean, uploads this as an artifact and then deploys it as GitHub pages. So the whole website is GitHub pages. But the in interesting part was that uh, uh, how we combine them and, and how the template looks like. So the template, one thing that we show, saw that we have these two curlies, and inside there is a variable name or just a string, and the value will be placed here. Um, the other one that I just exited this and, and should have seen it. The other one is the events uh, variable. So let's look for it here. And, um, and here it is, okay? So in this one, this is another part of the template system. Where we can where we create a for loop. Now historically, um, old schoolers like myself remember that everyone, basically every project. Okay, so even now every project starts out starts out with this that okay I need to generate some uh, report or HTML. I don't really need a full template system because I only need to replace one value. And uh, and then you 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 just create some basically your own template system just to replace one placeholder. And at one point you realize that you might need to have a conditional statement or you might need a loop and slowly you build up your own template system. And so there are probably hundreds or thousands of these template systems and quite a few of them actually are uh, well known or, or, or uh, commonly used. And so this is, this is like liquid one of them. Um, so this is one of the other features, one of the interesting features of, a, of any template system, basically, but here is two, uh, that you can write in various constructs. And here we are writing a for loop. Now, this one starts with a curly brace and percentage. And then here, percentage and curly brace. And inside there, there is some uh, uh, expression, basically, uh, using the this language of, of liquid. Okay, which is similar to other programming languages, but it's very, very limited. So in this case, we say for every event in the events vector, or in other languages, that would be a list on an array or whatever, that's just some uh, series of, of, of values. And then we can take, in, uh, okay, and wait a second, let me, so, so there's the for loop, and just to pull and show you, there is an end for at the end marking where the beginning and the end of the for loop. So unlike, let's say, Python, where there's indentation for loops, or Rust, where you have a curly braces, in this language, in the liquid language, you have the for event in events. OK, that's the beginning of for loop. And then end for marks the end of the loop. Inside the loop, I can use this event variable, which now represents one of those structs that we built uh, in the code, let me get back to the code. So here, this struct, okay, so the, each one of those events is a, such a struct. Uh, and then I can use 
And now inside I use these double curlies uh, to basically say that here we have to put in the value of the event URL and here, here the event title and here the event address and the name and so on. And this is how uh, repeatedly, let me jump to the website, we build these constructs. Now they are not very beautiful because I'm not very good at design uh, uh, to say the least, but uh, bearable, okay? Anyone wants to help, would like to improve it, you are welcome. I would be happy to make it even nicer. Uh, there is a sp separate div actually here where I put this. Uh, so the language appears twice here, once as uh, the text here, what you can see, English, for example, and once as uh, an attribute. And I did it because it's easier and more easier to extract the at attributes uh, using JavaScript. And uh, the same with the date time. So the date time, uh, we store, we don't even, with Rust, we don't generate the displayed uh, timestamp. We only put it as a as an attribute of a, of an HTML tag. And then the JavaScript code uh, actually takes this uh, timestamp uh, from this data, style, data time, date time, and fills out this, this field. And that's how it can show you the time in in your local time zone, and uh, the language is used. This 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 field this this uh, attribute is used for filtering uh, by language, uh, and then the rest is is some JavaScript. At the bottom of this file, I have just really actually vanilla JavaScript. I don't use any of the frameworks, any anything, not even jQuery. Yeah, so that's that's. Uh, I didn't plan on showing this, but uh, because I, I wanted to show the, the website and apparently it's using uh, um, Liquid. So this was a good good example. The other two that are using uh, uh, Liquid, so you might be familiar with the rust.codemaven.com uh, website. I, I'm going to put the link there. This is the main website where I blog basically. Uh, about Rust, you can go to go here and uh, look at the archive or the blog post. I haven't written much recently, but uh, um, this is what uh, where I run it. Now, this in order to generate this one, I use basically a static site gen site generator. There are many of these out there. Um, um, Jekyll is one of the famous ones. It's also written in in Ruby. That's what uh, GitHub actually, GitHub pages uses by default, but you can use any any of these uh, static site generators. So I started to write one for myself uh, in Rust. That was a fun thing to to work on. Obviously, there are hundreds of these uh, uh, ones, and I'm using the Liquid template system in this. So I can go to uh, let me check it. Actually, it's not. Yeah, I can open this work code Maven RS. Uh, I, I don't know if, if there's it's worth showing it. Here you can also see the templates. Uh, these are the templates, and then this code also fills out, uses the templates. We're going to go through a couple of uh, my slides basically where I have more basic examples, um, and then we can see those, though maybe these are more interesting was the actual implementation of them. So this one is the is the code maven and the other one so this is what I called make here it is called codemaven.rs this is basically the code that generates this website from markdown pages markdown files and some configuration and all of them so both the generator and the source code of, of this website are on github so you can you can take a look at them. And um, the third, uh, the third uh, project uh, that uh, is using this one, try liquid. I, I don't know why I. So the third one, I put it here. So this is the. Uh, oh, the, the Rust digger. So this is the, this is the one I, I talked about now. The first row here. This is the the. This is the actually the website of the single uh, of the static site generator, 
And the other one is the, the Rust Digger project uh, that I talk about it quite a lot also, that's connect, collecting data about uh, crates basically. Um, and this is also at the end some uh, static, it generates some static pages, but it's also using the liquid uh, templating system. So we might take a look at that as well, because it seems that, that, um, uh, that this is actually not bad sh showing you various of these examples. Now, what else wanted to, I, I wanted to, I put here some notes here so I can remember what to show you. Yeah, I wanted to start by, the, by this whole story, but that uh, you probably are familiar with emails that sometimes you receive that start with dear and then in curly braces F name. Okay, and so this is the text. Uh, and this happens because some spammer uh, sends you an email and forgets to replace the field and uh, that was used for the templating system with the actual value. I don't know what kind of bug is that, but uh, sometimes we get it. And then, so I started this spammy, spammy email to, to show you, but and then I forgot to, to show it in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, then there is this link the, to Shopify. Uh, let me get there. Shopify, Shopee, show, how is, how do you, uh, liquid template. Let's just look for this one and it will find it. Yeah, this links, the links there. Okay, so this is the website. Uh, this is the website of the liquid template system, or the original one that was created by Shopify. And uh, here we have the, the crate, the liquid crate, uh, that is basically an implementation of the same thing in uh, Rust, and we are talking about uh, about this one. And you can see here in the example that that globals that I mentioned that they are also using this, or they are using this, and that's that's why I also called it uh, that way. And um, so this one, and the, these are the the pro two projects that I wanted to show. Now let's go to uh, my basically my slides. So I have a. I used to teach a lot from slides where I had basically lots of lots of examples. So I want, at one point I started to create these slides for Rust as well. And I have a whole chapter about liquid. I put the link into the chat so you can take a look at it. And uh, I'll try to go over a, a few of these uh, slides um, because they are sort of not really, but sort of building on each other. And uh, not really because I wrote these slides, I think half a year ago, and haven't updated uh, them um, and haven't used them actually for for um, presentation. This is the first time, so uh, fine. Okay, so a couple of links to the create to the documentation and the Ruby Ruby Liquid website that we just saw. We create a new uh, in order to play with it. Okay, you create a new uh, crate or the one that you are using, and you need to add the liquid. Um, create as a dependency, you will get something like this. Since this slide was created, the new version, new versions came out. So I think now it's it's 26.6, but I guess there's no huge differences. And then this is the basic uh, example, uh, the first really basic example that I could show uh, that we take, um, so this is how we compile a template into, the, I, I, call, I use the word compile, but I'm not sure that they're, they're using the word build here, okay, but parse, okay, but basically we are converting a, our template, which is just some text uh, with these placeholders into this uh, liquid object. And so this is the code that, that uh, it comes from the basic example. Um, and then here in the parse, we provide the actual template. In the earlier example that I showed, we read this from a file. Uh, that's, uh, I would say, a little bit more complex reading from a file, but that would be the more correct way anyway. So that's why um, it was there. But it's easier to show you that here, this is the template. Okay, so just welcome to, and the, basically a variable name here. And then we create this global, this variable called globals. And here we put the, the mapping of the, the this variable called name that will be 
will be that will come here. The value of it will come here. The, its value is set to be liquid. Uh, the text liquid. And then this is the line that you, you saw earlier as well, where we are taking the data and combining in and embedding it, rendering the new, the new page, new text, uh, based on the template with this data. Okay, and then if we run this code, this is what we are going to see. Okay, because it will take the liquid string and put it here, and that's it. Okay, rather simple. I'm keep looking up because that's where the chat is. So if you, are, if you have any questions, just write there. Slightly more complex. This is the same, same, uh, still the same template, the same creation of, of, of compilation of the template. Uh, but this time uh, I'm showing that we can actually use this compiled, I, I'll keep using this word compiled, compiled template. We can use it repeatedly. So here we have a, uh, once we take this liquid, this uh, this this globals, and generate uh, the, uh, the output from it, and then I using a variable, which is which is at the end way more interesting uh, than uh, hard coded uh, data. So probably we're going to get this data that we need to put in the template from various variables. So here I have a. An str basically, which is not even even that is not really interesting because it's hard coded into your, your code, but it will it will it will work. So this is the second example where we have the the the, the value that we wanted to embed in an str, and probably the most interesting, the most dynamic one is when I'm building it from a from a string. Uh, that obviously I don't have had, didn't have to use a string from here. I just wanted to show you that uh, this can be a string that you build up uh, on the fly or, or read it from somewhere or, or anything. So it can be on the, on the heap and, uh, and uh, we do the same. And the output is at the top of the page. It's just replacing that uh, placeholder with these various uh, strings. Still very, very simple. Uh, now this one is would be the next step where we have a file name already here as a variable okay and then uh, instead of so in the let me go back a little here we have we call uh, where is it here i called the parse method in the next example that we are looking at where we have a file name we are calling the parse file method so this, in this case, during the runtime, while the process is running, uh, basically the liquid uh, system is reading in the content of the file and compiling or converting it into this uh, template object. So if you'd like to distribute something, a, a project like this, then you have to distribute uh, the template separately or tell the user that they need to create the template by uh, by themselves so it doesn't come built in the the the, the process uh, unlike what we sh we saw in the, in the example but anyway this is the same there is the template so this is the template that's nothing special nothing new the same we had earlier but this time it's an ex external file which is read on the fly while the process is running if else okay we didn't see this one earlier uh, so the code, uh, anything that if we'd like to, if you'd like to replace a single name or single variable with a value in the template, then you're using these double curlies. If you'd like to use some kind of a construct, conditional, loop, anything, uh, then you use this curly percentage and percentage curly, uh, closing it. So here we have an if, and then some of these uh, attributes that later will be going to pass in into this globe into this liquid object so here we can say if uh, this so here okay let, let, let me show you this is what we are going to pass in a, a name field with some string and this at home field which is a boolean and then one case i passed in true and one case i passed in false and the way we can use it is then we can say if this at home 
variable, let's say, call it, uh, then this will be embedded into the generated page. Uh, else, this will be embedded. And the else part is optional. Okay, so this part is optional as in any programming language, right? It is any language, okay? Um, so I think the output looks like this. Foo bar is at home and Patty bar is not at home. And this is coming from these uh, um, uh, expressions. Right. Again, and uh, forgive me for these unwrap calls. Uh, I didn't want to deal with all the error handling at this point, uh, partially because when I was actually written uh, at, at this, I don't think that I knew much about error handling when I wrote these slides uh, originally. But partially also because what we are focusing on is, is the, the code part of, of Liquid. Uh, else if also, so Liquid has this else if, this is how it's written. Uh, and so you can have an if some condition. And as you can see, so earlier in the previous one, let me get back. Here we used the variable as a Boolean value, true or false. This time we are using one of these variables that the, that the caller sends in and comparing it to some value. So it says if it's, it's, it's the color is blue, then, well, I think it would have been better if I actually uh, put here some text which is in blue or I don't know, whatever. Uh, this is not a very clever way of showing conditional and, and values. Uh, but basically I'm saying if it's blue, then write blue. Uh, and if it's green, then write green and otherwise just say unrecognized color. Okay, whatever. And then you can see that the, for the red, we got indeed unrecognized color. Else if. Case when. So the liquid template system also has this case when. Sorry, I'll have to drink a little bit. Uh, which looks like this. You, you uh, say case and some, some of these variables. And then you can have this when, when, when closes. And it can also have an else close. You have to end it with an end case. I don't think that I emphasized it. Like go back one side. You have to end the if statements with an end if. Okay. So for if that's an end if, for a for it's an end for, for a case it's an end case. Not very complex. Okay. Um, so this this is this is basically the same. And then you are passing in some data. Fine. Let me try to find a, okay, so that's not that interesting, but here I have a, a little bit more complex data structure where we have a, a key, a variable name basically, and then inside there is a, basically a hash, or hash map, uh, but it's still all, all in this liquid object um, macro. So, and then inside that in the template, I can access it with the name, this variable name dot with the dot notation. Um this is a little bit more interest. Oh, right. This is now why, why is it interesting? Because this time I'm passing in, I'm creating a I having a for loop. Okay, that's fine. But uh, I'm actually passing in a, a real vector uh, and not just from the from the liquid object, which is at the end is what we are you going to do because you're going to get this data from some uh, I don't know, database, reading in some files, like a YAML file I did. So that's how you are going to get this data. Uh, so you have to pass in some variables into this liquid object thing. And that's how we can pass in. And here uh, we are going over the, uh, this thing does actually, we don't really need it here. Uh, I think I just, I don't know. So I wanted to, sh to show another, um, extra level there, but but you don't really need it. But if you have this thing level, then of course here at all, I also have to say thing and then dot colors in order to reach this um, key in this uh, hash. Um, that's just, a, and it didn't get updated, that's just a vector of tuples. And then um, inside here, I can access them this way. Okay, so each color 
so there is the colors, okay, colors. Here I don't even have the thing anymore. That's good, better. So you have the colors, which is just this vector of colors. I go over it, so each color is a tuple, and then I can access, access the elements using the um, square bracket and the index. Uh, a hash. So here we have a hash map built in uh, in uh, in Rust, and uh, we are passing in. This is again colors. We are passing in this hash map into this color variable, and in the template I can go over uh, the these. Uh, Basically, I think it gets back tuples at the end, right? So it gets back key value pairs as tuples. So that's why I can access them as uh, uh, zero and one. Okay. Um, so despite the fact that, okay, so it's not really related to the fact that we were using here tuples to generate it, because at this point, it doesn't know anymore about the fact that we use tuples here. Um, it just uh, has a hash map, uh, but internally uh, we can use this uh, syntax to access the key value pairs, keys and values of that uh, hash. Uh, conditions, okay, so this is just a, a combining these things, not, not really new here. So I have this one level, the thing doesn't, is just there for to show off one more level. Then these animals in which is a vector of hashes, and then inside we are going over this uh, with animal in this things animals. So each of these animal is one of these hashes, and then in in there we can use the animal dot real as a condition because that's a boolean thing. Okay, so. Again, is just showing you that we can combine vectors, if statements, loops, and so on. Now they're jumping to another feature of Liquid, uh, which is called filters. Uh, and you can, there are certain of these extra, they call them filters, but extra tools that you can combine that you can use uh, to uh, alter basically the value that was sent in by Rust. So here we had a variable, a placeholder. Okay, so the variable called hole, and whatever the Rust program sent in into the value into the variable hole, that will be printed here. But we can also add the pipeline and then add one of these filters. And some filters are standalone. Uh, some get parameters. This one gets a parameter. Uh, maybe I should have started uh, the first one without a parameter, but uh, okay, doesn't matter. So what we have here is that we are sending in uh, into the whole value the word uh, the the this one the forty two, and in the float value we send in this four dot two. Okay, not very. Um, cleverly called variable names, but uh, whatever. So, okay, so we have, this is what we have to send in. The whole field gets 42 and the float field gets 4.2. And then we are trying to see how, how it can, how it can display. So basically these filters do mathematical operations. These filters specifically, we'll see other ones. These ones do mathematical operations on the original value. So, uh, if we go, let me, if I am, make it a little bit smaller, then we can see it at the same time. So when, when we say whole, this will be 42, that's fine. And the whole plus two, that will be 44. Not very surprisingly, it gets two. And minus two deducts two, uh, two from the 42. Okay, and that's how it displays. Now, I'm not really sure when would I use this plus and, plus and minus, uh, but it's there. If any of you have any, any idea of when would you want to use this, let me know, please. There are other ones which are more interesting. For example, upcase, downcase, capitalize. Okay, so this will uh, make the text uh, uppercase. This is uppercase. 
this is all lowercase. So this was the original, which is in this uh, strange case. This one uppercase, this one lowercase, and this is um, but but it says capitalize. For some reason, the I is not cap not with uh, capital letter. I'm not sure. Oh, because it sets only the first letter of the whole string to T, not every word, right? Okay. Uh, so this is capitalized. But there are more, more of these, and uh, I'm not sure that here in the documentation or in, in even in the documentation, you will see the full list of them. Maybe you do. Uh, but if you go to the uh, to the original uh, definition and documentation of liquid, this this is basically that should work in the same way in the Rust version because that that's what the definition that they, it has to be the same. Okay, if there are incompatibilities, those are bugs. Okay, so feel free to use the documentation from here for how this. Uh, for the templates themselves. And if you, something doesn't work that way, then that's that's supposed to be a bug, or that's, that's a bug, so then report it. Um, where are we? Here. So upcase, downcase, capitalize. Again, still not very exciting, but sort of seems more useful. First and last. This can be interesting. For example, if you have pass in a text, a string, or an array, or a vector, or, or a or a tuple, and then for each of them, we can use the first and last uh, thing uh, filter, and it will get you the first letter of the text and the last letter of the text, and uh, the first uh, entry in this array, or the first entry in the vector, oh, this, this one, the first entry, um, and again, this one, what was this? The tuple, the first and the last. So this can be, also, this seems to be something that might be useful, um, but uh, yeah, uh, this is not really in the right place, this slide, uh, because there are some more uh, about, uh, about filters. So maybe I should go ahead uh, and find other filter things, uh, but forget about it. We'll get there, okay? So maybe I should rearrange the slides for the next time I'm, I'm presenting it. So all the filtery stuff will be in the same place. Um, but for now, let's jump to this other thing, including. Uh, so the thing is that, um, for example, when you're creating a website, okay, and you would like you have different pages. So the content is different, but the header and the footer of the or the layout of the whole whole page is expected to be the same. So this is the, let's say if you go to the uh, to the Rust Digger website, so I have this for, front page with some text, and then I have the stats page, and you can't see, but let's say the, the menu is the same, okay? So this menu should be the same on every page. Uh, so I have different templates for each page type, okay? There are like, for, for example, I think I generate is like, every one page for every crate. So there are like 150 uh, pages that are, um, that has the exact same layout, just the content is different. But there are other pages where they have li different lists. But even those, the menu needs to be the same uh, and all kinds of other things to, needs to be the same. The way to solve it is there are two major ways that I know how to solve it. One of them, is to create to move the head the top part and the bottom part of the page into a, into separate files um, and and use that and and let me show that uh, actually how it's done on the on the rust digger okay so this is the rust uh, digger and the templates and let's say this is the index page okay and the index page includes another file called template templates include i i prefer to put them in a subdirectory it doesn't have to be a header so this is basically that every that is included by every template and and um, let me show you 
how it looks like. So I have templates. Oh, we way, way too many templates. Uh, so this is the templates. These are basically the page types. These are the various things that I might include. There are more page types. It's the way it's arranged. And there are some, some different pages. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So basically, if, you, if I list the templates folder, then these are the types of pages. And each one of them, if you look at, let's say, the Rust repos HTML, it doesn't really matter. If I open this one, you can see that this one also includes the header. And if I go to the end, it also inter in includes a footer. Okay, And this is the same with the index page. At the top, not this one, this one, this is the index page. At the top, I in include the header. And at the bottom, I include the footer. Now, in the header, you have all the HTML, the beginning of it, and all kind of these things. And it also includes another one, which is called navigation, which is the menu. OK, but how you do this, that's really up to you. But this include statement allows me to and you as well, to uh, move some of the common parts of the templates into a file and then include them in all of the, the, the templates. So this is one strategy where you have these, um, uh, you include the top and the bottom part, and then the template file is the, is the middle. The other strategy or other technique, let's say, is when you create these layout files, uh, and this is basically what I started to play with when I was trying to, where is it? Did I close it? Yeah, I, I guess I closed it. Uh, the um, virtual events. So this, uh, if you remember, templates page, Basically, I said uh, I, this is sort of the I, was the idea that I have I have a, a a layout, and then in the middle somewhere we embed the content. Okay, so it's supposed to be, and that's what uh, got me confused at the beginning uh, that this style would say that, okay, I generate uh, the content somehow from some other template, and then I embed that into this layout. So now I have the layout, the, the, the top part and the bottom part in a single file, and I embed in the middle the, the page uh, itself, the, the, the one that is different from page types, uh, between page types. Um, the former with the header and the footer, I can do e easily with the liquid. The latter, um, I couldn't find a very good way to do this, but I'm show I'm going to show you how I managed to do it. It's still not, it's not, maybe there is a better way. So anyway, uh, we are having this template. In this case, it not, it's not HTML, just plain text, doesn't matter. Where we, we have this page text which is the main template, let's say, and we include something which we call the he header. And in the header, we have this, uh, this text, okay? Just saying the uh, title in header and value in header. And then the way we integrate all of these is that we create these partial templates. So again, here, I would probably, if, if I would rewrite it uh, to use these liquid partial eager compiler in, in memory source uh, to make this line shorter. But uh, actually, I quite uh, like the also that uh, the full 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 uh, uh, full uh, text uh, versions of these full path versions. Um, some people don't like this and uh, prefer to to put use statements here and here have shorter things. And I think in this case, I would that would be better. better. But anyway, uh, we set up and create this type, which called which is called partials, and then uh, we create. We basically take the header or all the include all the one, all the things that we would like to include, um, and load them into these partials. That's how, at least, I could figure out how to do this. 
And then in the, when I'm building the template, I'm also adding these partials uh, to the template builder. So this is the, exactly the same what we had earlier, except that we also add, add the list of partial templates that we already loaded here. Um, right. Oh, I was I have been talking for an hour. Uh, I'll have some more, uh, and then hope, probably you're quite tired already. Uh, but I, I think I, I'm going to finish because there's no point on, on separating and, and having another session uh, about liquid, at least not this this, this time. So uh, this is the way we can embed other other templates uh, or or have uh, the include statements work out. Uh, so that's fine and. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we and then the rest is the same. So once we build up this template, including the partials, I just pa pass in some key value pairs or anything else, just as we did earlier. Call the render as we did earlier, and get back the data. And here too, I have a this example that's read file uh, because I didn't know about the the short uh, function that. Uh, it's a function. Yes, yeah, it's a function that can read in the file on the, uh, without me implementing all these things. So I guess I guess I'll have to get rid of this because it's rather um, unnecessary here. Here, um, yeah. Or alternatively, I could embed the content of the of the the text. Okay. So it's up to you if you would like to read in the these files on the fly when the process is running or embed the, the templates up front into the into your binary and then you can read you can distribute basically just the single binary and all the templates are built in it both have advantages and disadvantages this is an interesting thing another, another interesting thing that you can do so uh, here what i do is take inside the template I'm assigning and I'm, I'm adding a variable with some value. So up till today, up till today, up till now, what I what we did is I passed in all the values from Rust into the template, and then uh, the liquid combined them. This way, I can set some of these values in the template, and this can be interesting. And uh, where where was? Yeah, I had this example when I was showing the rocket uh, uh, web framework, but uh, it can be that in certain, that uh, let's say in the header, you need the, the title. And for some pages, uh, the for most pages, basically, the framework, the system, the, the Rust program is setting the title. But there might be certain pages, and I think there we had the 404 page, where we didn't want the... Uh, Rust code to set the title. Okay, I think I didn't want it just to show this, but there might be reasons why you don't want it. Uh, and then you can uh, put it in this specific template before the include. Okay, and then this way I assign the um, uh, this the title variable this value. Uh, so inside the include, I can already use this title, and I will get this value. Uh, this can be useful uh, sometimes. This is just the addition where I have two partials, one for the header, one of the footer, and then we are embedding them. And uh, and 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 where is the template? Yes, this is the template for embed the header and the footer, and that's it. So this is how uh, the Ross digger works, right? And this is the layout uh, idea that I mentioned, the other idea. And the way it, sorry, this one, this works is this. So the, the layout page, okay, the layout page, which has, has the, the header part and the footer part and the content part, this is how the layout page looks like, okay? So this is, in the earlier example, we had the header and the footer separately. Now we have a header and the footer in a single file, and we have a place for the content. 
And for each template, each, each page type, we have a template that says, uh, capture this text or content, put it in the variable called content. Okay, so this and this must be the same. This is the content. Okay, of course, you can use also the word kukuriku or foobar or whatever there. Okay. Uh, and then include the layout text. So, so this is the layout template. So we still need to have one include statement here, uh, but this is how, uh, or, or at least this is how I managed to do it. Maybe you can do it also inside Rust, uh, setting the include uh, statement. I'm not sure, okay? But this is the other, other way, uh, the other way of, of how uh, having uh, shared header and footer with uh, for several page types. Uh, we actually saw a struct uh, that is not very interesting. Uh, yeah, this is just an example of a struct, a uh, Rust struct that we are passing in somewhere. Uh, where, where is the struct? Oh, you know, here I'm creating the struct and then I'm passing in a struct and then I can use the dot notation inside to uh, access the attributes of the struct. It's very interesting because that's how we are passing in most of our data, but we already see it, so it's so not not uh, we don't care it uh, about it too much. This one is is maybe even more uh, interesting. I I wanted to see how what happens if one of the or one or more of the attributes are actually options, and uh, and yeah, so you can. It works. Okay. So basically, that basically I wanted to see if it works and how how does it work. And it works. You can take a look at this example if you'd like to to see it uh, for yourself. Back to the filters. Okay. I probably should merge the, those parts together. Uh, here we we, are, we see a, a filter that re reverses arrays. And um, so Russ, not Russ. Sorry. Liquid comes with a filter called reverse. And what it does, it reverses arrays or, or lists of values or whatever, or vectors. Um, so not strings, that's, the, that's where I'm emphasizing. Uh, so here I have these items, two, three, four. And uh, if I say just items, it will show them without any spaces, okay? If I call reverse, if I put a pipeline and reverse, so filter through this reverse, then I get, uh, them in the reverse order, uh, and I can use this also in a for in a for loop. So here I have a for loop on the items, and I show the item with a space. So now we have a space here, a little bit more readable, and I can use this. So I have I assign uh, a variable called R items. You remember the assign, and then basically I assign to R items the items pipe reverse. So this new variable called R items is the reversed items. And then I can use this and go over them uh, uh, those and print out the item with the with the space. And here's the end of the for loop. So this is how I can take a, a vector, reverse the values, and then show them uh, one by one. Uh, and then this one is is for item in item it's reversed. Okay, I'm not sure what is this anymore. Um, I forgot about this this last example, but apparently it also shows me uh, how to reverse them uh, this way. <clears throat> Uh, right. Okay. For loops, oh, another slight mix-up in the slides. For loops, there is an uh, there are so certain loop controls that we can use. For example, uh, when you're printing out uh, values, this is not very nice. There are these spaces. What if we, uh, and especially the the one that is not nice 
is that it prints out an extra space here. Okay, it will be especially interesting or do we have? Yes. Well, okay, this is a good, oh, this is the, a good example. So I have a bunch of uh, numbers in this case, and I would like to print them one after the other with a comma in between. So what I can do is I can, I have this for loop, and then I print, put here the item, comma, space, and end form. And it looks so good, it looks good, but after the last value, I still have a comma and the space, which is what is written here. But that's not really good. I don't want this comma, especially the comma not. The space not might be less important, especially in HTML, but the comma I definitely don't want. So what, what can I do? Here I can in the in the inside the loop, I can use this for loop dot and one of these loop controls. So for loop last would be will be true if this is the last element in the for loop. And what I'm saying here is that this is now how what I, how I'm putting in the item. So I'm saying that if we are on the for loop last, then don't put there anything. Otherwise, put the comma and the space there. So the result is that now we have we don't have a comma and the space after the last value. Okay, and then there you have a couple of these uh, other loop. Uh, I think these are called loop controls. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, loop attributes maybe uh, that you can use. Uh, uh, maybe you maybe there was also a not. I could also say not. I'm not sure, and then it will be easier. And I think this is the last thing that I want wanted to show is that how to create your own filter. And I, I think I have a two two versions of it. Um, so I, I this one is actually using a crate which is called liquid filter reverse string. Okay, uh, I'll show you the crate itself uh, that I wrote. Uh, so now uh, because the the reverse that we saw can all it will only work on vectors or arrays or whatever. So it is individual elements. What if I would like to reverse a string? So that's what one, one of the uh, ideas was. And the other one was uh, the comma phi. So you will have a number, which is many digits, and you would like to put uh, commas after every three digits from the right to left to make that more readable. So these are the two, two examples. I, I created the, the comma phi is what I really, really needed. And this was just uh, seemed to be uh, uh, easier. Um, okay, so Thomas is Tomas is leaving. So bye bye. See you next time. And uh, you can watch the end end of the the movie uh, if you like. Uh, on the, and don't forget, I, I I already forget. Don't forget to like the video and follow the channel and tell other people as well. See you next time. Anyway, see you, Labor. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I have a few more minutes here to 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 finish, I guess. But uh, yeah, some people have to leave. Uh, it's okay. So here I'm using this uh, reverse string. Uh, so the usage is not very interesting. Uh, I just use it. Okay, I I add it as a dependency. I use it, and then I here I can use uh, the 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 filter, okay? What might be interesting is that it's called reverse str lowercase and here it's capital letters, okay, whatever. But the rest is the same, okay? So there's nothing, not, well, not, not exactly. I have to add this filter here, okay? Okay, that's, 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 or, okay. Uh, let me just go back one or two where I use some filters. So here I didn't need to add any field, any extra where I was using the, um the filters provided by rust sorry by liquid because those are built in uh, filters but if i go to the point where to the slide where we are using the uh, the homemade filter then we need to also uh, add it here okay so this is uh, where i have to add the filter and the filter itself is 
on crates io this is the implementation so yeah well you know what i won't go into the details uh, you can look at the you can look at the implementation uh, i had to play around with it quite a few uh, hours till i got got it right but you have two examples of how to create your own filter which has basically some input value and so basically it's a function right you have an input value and it gives us some output value you just have some constructs here uh, to to create them so you can uh, you can uh, see them and i think you have this is the link there are the link to the to the create itself and to the source code and the other one is the comma phi which actually in uh, Nowadays, I would have been implemented. I would I would have implemented in a different way because I found out how to uh, another create that can commify. So add the commas. Basically, this is what I wanted. No, oh, I can't see it. I don't have the test case. They put commas here after the uh, between the four and the three, between the two and the three. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, yeah, some more more here, but that's it. Okay. Now uh, this is already a to-do list, which is which I've already done. I think most of it. So that's it. I think. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, staying and uh, watching, and I hope that this helped. And please don't forget to uh, like the video and uh, tell about tell about it others and tell about the meetup, uh, the meeting and the meetup group. Uh, to others so they can participate in upcoming meetings. Thank you and bye-bye. Uh,